Hi, and welcome to Create Love Arts. My name is Sharon, and we are working on a series of ba bare basics crochet beginnings. So just the standard, how you begin, what, what to do, wh what to use, how, how to do the simple things. I've had many people over the years say, oh, I, I really love that. I wish you could teach me how to do that, but nobody has time. My goal here is that by making these videos is that you can, anyone, literally anyone, can get the materials and watch the video at their pace. I do recommend that when you are first starting out, you, you choose lighter colored yarns, uh, especially when you're beginning. It's just easier to see them. I have a selection here of different cottons. I have a, a peach, a yellow, a green, a darker purple, and a black. Everyone loves the black, and black is great. It is fantastic to work with at the end of the project. It's, it looks fantastic at the end. Let me, let me put that in that way. It looks great. The issue with black is it's very difficult to see the stitches that you're trying to put your hook into. And real quick, I'll show you an example. If I make my slip knot and start chaining, what you're going to see is, I'll just do a couple stitches there. It, it, gets really hard to see where you're supposed to put your hook in. And when you're turning the chain, and this is what I'm going to teach today, is turning the chain and getting into single crochet, which is one of the most basic stitches, it gets difficult to find where you need to go in. Even when I put it up to the camera really close, it's hard to see the differentiation. So I would caution that you don't use the black if you've already bought it and you are that's the only thing you have try it it might actually benefit you in the end because if you can see the black you can see anything so that that could be helpful but I would recommend that you don't so like I said what we're going to start with today is going back over that chain and how to form your slip knot and make the chain and then we're going to turn the chain and this is the very first row so the chain doesn't count in most pa in all patterns typically the chain does not count as the first row now there's something called a foundation single crochet or a foundation double crochet that is where you chain and put the stitch in at the same time that's a little more complex and I'm not doing that kind of tutorial today that would be the only time that you count your chain is what I'm trying to get at. Otherwise, your chain is just your baseline. It's how many stitches across you're going to go. And that will be determined by A, the pattern that you're working with, and B, how long or big you want something to get. First off, we're going to begin. The only thing you need today, I have a bunch of things out here because I'm going to do a series of these. But the only thing you really, really need at this moment is any skein of cotton for weight yarn, any any skein you want, any different brand you want. The end of this tutorial, well, throughout the tutorial, after we learn our basic stitches, I'd like to teach you how to make your very first item. And that is going to be this. Now, I haven't even woven the ends in because I just finished it. It's a dish. It's just a dishcloth. It's just for the sink. You throw it in the sink, use it to wash your dishes. You can wash anything with it. Great for tables. It's really good to get tables clean when you're done eating or whatnot. So this particular pattern that I've created is all three of the main stitches that you are going to use. And I wanted to create the pattern in a way that it still looks pretty. Um, the goal is to make something. And so what I'd like to do is teach you the three different stitches, which are single crochet, double crochet, and half double crochet. And today we're going to start with the single crochet. 
But first we need to make a chain. So you're gonna grab your five millimeter hook. You will need a five millimeter hook, which is also known as an H8 in US terms. I can't quite get that number on camera, but you kind of see where I'm going there, the five millimeter. And they'll usually be listed down at the bottom of the um, hook. This one, it's pushed into the rubber. Uh, some of them are stamped right on. The metal hooks have it engraved right onto the hook. The engraving is actually the better choice. These wear off after over time. Um, but once you get to using them, you'll you'll know which hook is which by just by holding it and using it, typically. So I think I'd like to start with this peach color. I don't have very much of it. Clearly, I've used it for another project. Um, and this is a different brand than the others. It's actually the older version of those, I believe. I think this brand was discontinued. Um, but I... I think this color is going to show really well on camera, so I'd like to use this first. And again, we're going to start every time with a chain. The chain starts with a slip knot, and I will caution you, you want to make sure that you, you keep yourself at least four to six, eight, four to six inches. Oh my goodness, I'm having trouble today. Four to six inches in length past the slip knot. So you're gonna you're not gonna make your slip knot down here. I mean I could do it real quick, but look what's gonna happen. You're only gonna have that much to work with when you need to weave in those ends. That's not enough. What'll happen is your whole thing will start pulling apart at the end and that is the last thing anyone wants. So don't make your slip knot too close to the end of this of the yarn. You want to pull back. You want to give yourself a good length. You want to make sure that you have at least enough to make a couple of passes through uh, your stitches at the end so that it doesn't unravel. So we're going to go to about here. Use my tail to do this. Go around your fingers twice. Grab the top. Pull that back and through and then grab both extra pieces of yarn while you're holding that one and pull. All right, so there's a couple of different methods there. I got used to doing them very quickly, so it, it is a learning process for me. Now you don't wanna pull this tail too hard after you've done this without a hook in there because it will come off, it will unravel. So there's your slip knot. Now you're going to take your five millimeter hook and put it through your slip knot. Now that's too loose. You see, I've got a big gap there. It's way too loose. So then I'm just going to hold both ends and pull until it tightens up a bit. Now that's a little too tight. See, I want my needle, I want it to be able to slide all the way down. If it's too tight, if it's up here, what will happen is I have to fight it. I have to fight it to move. We don't want that. We want to make it so that it's just loose enough. I'm trying to see if you can see what I'm seeing. Yep, see that little gap there? That's what we want. Okay, so then after I made yesterday's video or the other video from this, I remembered there's actually a way with using alliteration, which is basically just using the same first letter of a word for to help you remember something. So I always said pinky index pinch with that. But then it, it occurred to me I could do pinky pointer pinch and that might help someone else. So to wrap that yarn, pinky over the pinky, over the pointer, and then pinch that knot. And that's how we begin. So now we're going to start chaining. We're only going to chain 20 to start. I just want to get you going on this and we'll only do a little a few rows and then you can practice on your own over and over again you're welcome to pause the video you're welcome to come back to the video that's the best part about doing learning tutorials through 
YouTube especially, because they give you the functions. You can get the transcript and the closed captioning. So we're going to begin with our chain 20. So we're just going to count them out. Remember the needle goes in, the hook goes in front of the yarn. We wrap it around, bring it down, and pull it through. Once we pull that one through and turn around, that's one chain. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now I counted as I went. You can always come back and remember count the V's that you see. One, two, three. And also, the other thing I wanted to point out is, again, you can always pause. If I go too quickly, pause it, and you'll just catch right back in. So what I did was I chained 20. Now, in order to go on to a single crochet and, and go to the next row, we need a turning chain. A turning chain is different for each, for each of the three stitches, but it doesn't have to be. Um, I always, for a single crochet, I always chain one more. That is your turning chain, one more. You do not count that chain on the next row, okay? That's part of your, that's part of your chain. It's not part of your row count. So now, instead of having 20, I have 21. And again, that's for turning. So now that here's where it gets fun. This is where we're going to run into the uh, single crochet. So now you can go in through here to start your first. I don't want you to do that. I want you to flip it over. Do you see these little bumps on the back? We are going to work into those bumps for single crochet. There are two reasons why. One, I believe they're easier to see and to navigate. They're easier. And two... It creates a more finished edge at the end. And you're probably going to border most things with another couple of rounds of something when you're done. But if you're not, this still looks better than... Let's just do that. You see how that kind of... It's not... You can't... You don't see a loop there. It's just... I don't know. To me, it's a little messy, but... Everyone has their preference. So we're gonna work into the bump. So after you've done your chain 21, you're gonna flip, flip it over. You're going to see this is where your hook is. This is not a stitch. That very first one is not a stitch. You're gonna jump to the very next bump, that little bump right there. So you see there's one here, that's a no. That is this, that's that chain. We're not working into that, we're not counting it. So we're going to skip that one and we're going to jump into the second bump. You're going to put your hook into that bump. Now this is where it could come in handy if you wanted to. You could use a size or two bigger hook so that you can get into that bump easily. You're just going to pop your hook right through. You And don't be afraid to manhandle the yarn. It will not hurt it. Unless you grab scissors, you're not going to hurt this yarn. Um, it it does get thready. You can see that you have some some threads. You don't. You want to make sure that you're not going into one single thread. But otherwise, when you're working into the chain, especially, use your fingers. Use that hook. Jam it in there. It's fine. Now, pardon me. Once your hook is through, you're going to do just like a chain. You're. <coughs> oh, pardon me. <clears throat> pardon so just like a chain so you're going to take that hook in front of the yarn you're going to wrap it around so that the yarn is caught by the hook part and you're going to pull it through now you'll have one two loops on your hook 
These two loops are the single crochet. You're gonna wrap that again and pull it through one more time. You've just made your very first single crochet. Now you're gonna do it again. Go into that next bump, just like before, and again, it can be difficult to get in there, but you're gonna push right through, wrap that hook around your yarn, wrap it around, and pull it right through. Now you have one, two loops on your hook, wrap the yarn again, and pull it through. There's your second one. Now we're gonna do it again, right through the bump, Make sure you're going into that bump in the middle. And you can see where that separates. See, I went into the front of it. I wanna go all the way through, through that loop. I don't wanna catch all the other fibers from the other side, I just wanna go through that one loop, that bump. And then you wrap the yarn around your hook, pull it through, two loops on your hook, wrap and pull through again, single crochet done and you can do you're going to do that all the way down all the way to the very end and when you get to the last stitch i will show you what to do so from here you can pause until you get to the end i'll just continue on if anybody needs to see more of what i'm doing and we are going to get there fairly quickly i think so through that bump, wrap it, pull it through, two loops, pull it through both of the loops, single crochet is done. Bump, pull through, two loops, wrap it, pull it through, done. Through that bump, two loops, wrap it and pull it through, and single crochet is done. So now I'm just going to get to the end here real quick to the last stitch, last bump and show you that one is a little different. No, well, it's not different. You just have to really look for it sometimes. Sometimes it's real easy to see. And that's one of the reasons why I use the back bump on these because it can get a little tricky to see that last stitch no matter what row you're on, whether you're on the chain or row one or row 201, you have to be real careful and count your stitches. So when we get to the end here, I'm almost there, I'm a couple places in front here. There's, here's our last two. Now, I think they're pretty clear to see here, but when you're working on this last stitch, it's a little different. So you're gonna do this one. I'm gonna just gonna pop my hook through here do my last single and here I am my loop is still on the hook and this is my last bump when I'm using this bump that is the slip knot so what's going to happen is when I pop my hook through here I can loosen this and tighten it by pulling the tail and you want to make sure that once you pull through and do that last single crochet you're going to want to tighten that up so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just gonna pull my hook out and show you how to do that. So you see how that got real loose right there? Cause we put a stitch there. The slip knot will allow you to grab the knot part and just pull on the tail. And when you do that, you've tightened it back up so that it's all one base. And there it is, the first row of single crochet. So now I'm gonna put my hook back in and I'm going to pull the working yarn tight against it. From here, you're turning chain. You can make the chain here right now. I prefer to turn my work first, turn it. So when I turn it, when we work on the first row, we're going from the, we're actually when we work from the chain, we're going from left to right. Then we go from right to left. Now we have to turn it. So we're going to, you're going to drop it and you're just going to turn it. Okay, so let me take the hook out so you can see what I'm doing. This is the first row. And you can tell that because the tail's right here. This is our end tail, the cut side. So you're going to take this with the loop right here and you're just going to turn it. 
And then this is where we're going to begin working is right on this side. Now this side does look different. Do you see? There's the loops on this side. The loops are up top and you can see the stitch itself. The anatomy of a single crochet is that it's got two legs and a top. Okay. Just two legs and a top. And I'll let you look at it real carefully, real closely. When you're working into these stitches from the other side, you're going to notice, I just got to move my yarn there. You're going to notice that there's a hole in between those loops there. That is where you're going to put your needle, your hook, I mean, keep calling it a needle. All right, so I've got my hook back in there. You want to make sure also that it's not twisted. I don't want to keep my hook in this way because you see what happened? It twisted it. I don't want twisted stitches. So I'm just going to pop it in. You can see because you can lift it up and down. That's right. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn it. And all I do is that. See how that motion goes? Just like that. And then, because I need a turning chain, I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to make my turning chain right now. And I just chain one because we're doing single crochet. Just one little chain. Because that chain doesn't count, we are going to go into this stitch. That's your very first stitch. You see that hole right there? It's between the two loops and you're gonna pop it through. Now, you don't wanna pop it through and pop it up. That would be a front post crochet, that's different. You don't wanna pop it through the top here and go down. That is a back post or a back loop crochet. So we don't want the front loop or the back loop crochet. We wanna do a full single. So you're gonna take that hook you're going to put it into that hole and you're going to go through both of those loops do you see how there is a, a v on the top that's how you know it looks like your chain that's what you want on the top of your hook when you are working into a stitch unless otherwise stated so then you're just going to do another single crochet you're going to wrap the yarn pull it through two loops on your hook wrap pull through again done and now again we're going to go into this one and if you put your finger here behind that stitch you can feel if you're going through both loops or if you're just going through one because you'll still feel the yarn so I find it easier now eventually you could end up with a bruise on your finger if you poke too hard right there so be careful doing that but it is helpful from time to time so you're going to pop the hook into that hole make sure that you have the two loops the V is on top of your hook and then you're going to wrap that yarn pull it through two loops on your hook wrap and pull through again and so now you're just going to do it again and that's all it is and I'm just going to get going here to the end so that I can show you that it ends the same way as the other one so you can just you know go back and look at it from the front or from the back I'm going to do the whole thing and show you how to turn it one more time before we end so as you go, pull through, two loops and pull through again. Poke in, pull through, wrap and pull through again. All right. So if you don't feel like you understand this, you're welcome to leave a comment or message me. I will, you know, reword it for you if that's all you need or even show you in a different way. Maybe I went too quickly for you. Uh, maybe you, you just misunderstood something I said. You're welcome to contact me at any time through the comments or the message on Facebook. Um, you can just leave a message on the comments and I will see it. So 
otherwise, this is where I want to stop here. I want to show you there's two more stitches. You see that? Make sure that you do all of the stitches in each row. And one way to make sure that you have is we started with a chain of 20 and then we added one for the turning chain, just one. So we should have 20 stitches, not 21, 20. So I'm gonna pull my hook out because I find it easier. Where you're gonna count is at the top here. You're not gonna count these stitches here. That can get tricky and it's best not to do that. You're gonna count each one of these loops. Okay, we have one loop here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and that one is twenty. Okay, so when you get to your twenty, you know that you have done all the correct amount of stitches for that row. Stitch counts are I cannot stress this enough. Stitch counts are ridiculously important. So make sure that when you are doing a row, whether you count as you go or as if you want to count um, at the end like I just did, you should count each row or every other row. And if something looks off, you need to count it again. So I have miscounted. I have done poor counting, I have gotten cocky and not counted at all. And that bites you so hard in the behind on the bigger projects. So I would highly recommend that you just get used to every other row or every row, depending on what you're doing. Make sure that you're getting yourself a good count. Okay. And again, we're just going to turn our work just like that. Just like that. We're going to work into the holes up there. We're going to do a turning chain real quick and then right into that first hole wrap it and pull it through and what I want you to do is just practice this take as much time as you need to understand it also I think it's important and one of the reasons why I think I've been successful in learning new stitches quickly I'm, I look at the anatomy of the stitch. I want to look at it and go, okay, it's a knot, really. It's just a knot. How is it made? Well, we make it with one, one loop on the hook, a slip knot, basically. We're just going in through like a shoelace hole and bringing up another loop to play with. And then we're going to pull another loop through it. That's a three loop process. One, two, three. That's the, the one for the next one. So you've got one, two, three loops. That's all this is. It's looping and knotting. And don't overcomplicate it. It it will get easier no matter what. If you practice, anything will get easier as you practice it. So, and, and also, I, I want to point, also say this. A lot of people, I'm going to set this down. I want you to continue doing that single crochet either while I'm talking or on your own time, of course. But a lot of people comment to me that it takes pure talent, crochet does, and the yarn arts in particular. I would suggest that that's only partly true. Yep, some people have a knack for it, and they catch on to things very quickly in the arts, especially in yarn. That doesn't necessarily mean that no one else can learn it or do it properly. Talent can only go so far. You need to practice, ooh, practice and keep trying. That's all it is. It's determination to, to learn and to succeed. I, when I first started, I wanted to make something and I got in over my head. I wanted to make something big. And within the first, I don't know, I want to say week, maybe two weeks of learning, I decided to start a corner to corner blanket with three different or two, two or three different colors, three different colors in a striped pattern at an angle. I took, I bit off so much more than I can chew. And 
Although, yes, I did manage to do it. It looked fine. It looked great. I gifted it to my grandmother because she was the one who bought me the yarn for it. Um, it, it was, it worked out well, but it was trial and error and determination to finish. It had very little to do with raw talent and much more to do with being determined to finish. I was, wasn't about to waste the yarn that had been gifted to me. So keep that in mind when you're doing these projects and, and choosing a project. Sometimes they, they're gorgeous and they look so, so yummy and you just want to have it. And that's great. But know your limits and understand that if you do choose to do that, frustration can set in. You just have to barrel through and either finish it or rip it out and try something else. And that's my bit of advice for you today. All right. I am going to be up for the next part of the series, which will probably be half double crochet, which is the next stitch that you should learn. And this is um, something I, I do want you to practice this one quite a bit because single crochet is very, very common, but it's also the simplest. So it's something that you can really get your hand tension good in. You can see the yarn tension. You can see how it, how tight it is and how loose it gets. And you can really adjust with this particular stitch. stitch. So thank you so much for your time. And I, I really hope that you're learning and growing. And I hope you also have a great, great day. Thanks.